We call it uh, manipulated ready-mades because they are manipulated ready-mades and I'll explain how. But then, when I used the word scan, I felt like this is not a scan. Scan is when you take a photo, you put it under the scanner, and you have, a, you have whatever result depends on the scanner you use. But we invented the word scanogram in a way, like a photogram. A scanogram because each image that you see in the archive in the series is was scanned three times by three different scanners. I found out that every scanner is good for another, every scanner that I have, works, uh, is good for another layer of the photograph. So one scanner is working on the surface of the photograph. Another scanner is on the part that it's just uh, torn apart from the photograph. And the third scanner is for all the faults. Because if, as, what is a scanner? A scanner just throw light. It can throw light like, uh, right, like going from here to here. You know how this kind of works. It can just do, if it's a professional, very expensive one, it's doing it all at the same time, spread the light. But then the result is very, how do you flat. Yes. So what I did, I used three of them. And then in Photoshop, I just pressed the, I, I combine these three layers <laughs> to have this very, I think, deep, uh, three-dimensional uh, result. To have all the details that you, uh, you have, not only on the photograph, but also in the parts that are, the parts that deal with the time that the photo, the, 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 the aspect of time that is within the photograph. Uh, all the folds, all the parts that are turned apart, which are part of, uh, of uh, the piece. Okay. And also, like, one more quick thing about the, the difference between um, the original archival photograph and the scanograms is in scale, mm -hmm. and most definitely in presentation. Right? So a lot of these photographs are very small, mm -hmm. different sizes. Um, so I just want to point that out as, as a, a way to think through this, this gap that there's a a transformation of the images into art, which is very important. And I hope we'll see more time on later. Because also a scanogram in a way, it's like, it's like, like, like I'm building a video in a way. Yeah. I, I, it's building a narrative. Yeah. Yeah. I think scanogram from the front part, I'm having a Yeah, I think we did this narrative that you see the we have to do 348 a year after 48, according to Samira, or 1949, and then post ghetto. Mm -hmm. Well, although this, there's one ghetto picture. But so, so certain meanings um, come out more strongly in this presentation. Wedding and ghetto, right? There are other kinds of meanings and information layered into these images. So within the context of the archive, they'll keep giving. In this context, it's not, <coughs> a little bit. not that you can't find other meanings in them yourselves, but there's a focus on particular aspects of the photographs through their, their um, order and their presentation. And the, the way that um, you make them all the same size, their regulation through your artistic hand as opposed to your archival hand. Um, so you streamline the story in a way. I just want to make that really clear. And what was the last one? No, no. Okay. I think, should we take some questions? Yes. All right. Sure. Any questions about these? Um, I have a question about um, what you're talking about, the conversation of, of the group when we make an archive, and the archive being a way to create kind of a one wholesome narrative. And I wonder if I saw some chat, the only thing that I do No, I don't think the archive creates one narrative. Oh, okay. You can create many narratives within it. And it's also open. That's why it will be online. So it will be open. You can build your own narrative. If you want to focus on weddings, you can take weddings all over from different locations, different cities, and just focus on that topic. If you, I mean, if you, you want to focus on clothing, on clothing or, it's really, it's, I'm just suggesting yeah. my narrative. But you can, you can say, okay, I'm, I'm not, I, I want to build my own. It's going to be an open platform. Sorry, Very but wasn't the no, question, it, sorry. Well, definitely add to the question. I was wondering also if you felt um, any, 
said, any risk in, in doing something like this in the sense that um, a group that has freedom, even though it seems like you feel like that to be anywhere in many different categories, um, kind of closing it up in this one. I don't know. But is that something you felt? I'm not sure if I'm Sorry, I'm asking her to. Yeah. to I'm suggesting you a category. You can most definitely deny this category and create your own. But, the, but I will say that one thing that I'm, as an artist, really an archive, and I'm always switching hats, like I'm from the historians or the archivists. As an archivist, as an artist in building an archive, <coughs> the, uh, the, I, the way that the archive is built and organized is not the same way that the official archives are built and organized. Usually official archives are by uh, years or location and so on. Uh, but this archive is uh, based on uh, what I like to call Eastern logic. It's based on families. So. I also think it's it, the, in terms of this question about categories and classifications, if you watch the videos in the show, um, all that, if you, you watch Samira, for example, like you see her from here, she, identif she ad identifies across categories. So part of the work is also very much about um, being sort of wholly many things simultaneously. And in, in, in that sense, Benny and I write an art essay a little bit about creating some sort of new way, if, if you will, of thinking through how to self-identify. Um, so just another point that's different than that. I just have a curiosity question about the technique. From my experience, photos from this period, they turn brownish white, and these are very black and white. Is that a decision to make them black and white, or is that part of the product? Just curious. It is a decision, yes. Why? And you can see them in the archive in the color that they are, but I felt that the, uh, if, when I build a series, I wanted to, them to uh, unify them, so you can read, uh, that you can see those scenes. If you see the originals, like the original colors, one of them had like was totally green because they doesn't that take the concept of antiqui antiquity of historical linearity from the photographs? It as uh, works of art, but within the archive online, you get the original. You get the original. You see that that's why it's so important. There's this big distinction between. So was that a conscious decision to take? Yes, the like it's a conscious decision when I edit Samira and she talked for three hours and I give you only ten minutes. Yes, it is. It's an it's an artistic decision. And as a, as I say, this is a scan, but it's only an offer. Mm -hmm. Can I just add the Dead Sea Scrolls, which is one of the oldest part of the archives in that part of the world? You can look at the original, but it's difficult to read. It's but from certain kinds of camera techniques, actually some of the letters that are that were formerly invisible can now be read. So what's true? To look at it the way it is now, or to look at it the way in which it was enhanced by a skilled technician that wants us to understand the meaning of it. There's some adaptation, in fact, that's what you're doing as well. Yeah, because they are manipulated. And even with size, you see, I mean, this, this is so dramatic when you look at this photograph. It's obviously very dramatic because a huge part of the photograph is, is uh, torn, 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 torn. But, <laughs> but the original photo is like that small. So it is manipulated, the entire series is manipulated that aspect. Maybe one more question and then we'll go back. Yes. Um, so for your archive, you um, do you also scan the other side? If there is information on the other side, like the photograph at the end, you can see the name and the signature and the year, which is 1958, then yes, I will scan it and show it. But and most of them, most of them doesn't have anything on the back side. And same thing with all these, so all these young people. Yeah. yeah. So for example, like with the one with the, you said Yad Vinyavi, right? Uh, the one this one had a, a, a signature that was totally, I have it, it's yeah. not sharp because 
It's, it's a very small signature, pepper signature, and you can see only Nachat Ben Yamin, mm -hmm. and that's it, the entire, and the rest of it, it just... So I have it scanned, but there's nothing, okay. there's nothing to see, but the information is good, where it was taken. I see. Just because um, there's another distinction between archive and this uh, art exhibit is the, in the archive you actually, use, like you actually touch this uh, the object, and there's you definitely... You touch an object? Well, you might not touch it, but I mean, in a sort of physical archive, you have the, the sort of the objectness of the It's object, an online archive, yes. Which is sure. here, it's not necessarily in your habits. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's an online project. Yes. Yeah, it's true. So yes. I mean, my family follows, I don't give it back, but <laughs> <laughs> with the rest, the rest of the family, I, I stand it back. Yes. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much.